When I was a kid, my world of imagination was building tree houses. That was the real playground for creativity and physical work. I started from the bottom using um, old potato boxes just right after potatoes were planted. And then with the skill, it turned into the more complicated structure supplied in the existing landscapes. And the various elements started to affect the structure, like sun position, viewpoints, garden, places where to read a book or, in, or places where to oversee the surroundings. That was the place where kids seasonally were meeting every year. I was dreaming and sketching and doing a lot of notes, but the only way how I could totally immerse myself into this perspective scene was building it with my own hands. Just like the box on the top of the box, it turned into the form and structure. I remember that um, Garage and Daddy's tool set was the most familiar computing systems at that time. I was really into the action and real doing. What I wanted to create with that is the sense in between the space and imagination. So I went to the School of Architecture. Years of dedication, hard work, push and pull. During the studies, we did a lot of modeling, in fact, and visuals and drawings. But somehow I felt that it is a language created by architects to architects. And when I first jumped into the project that involved the public, I eventually realized how weak I was in communicating my designs. And I had a feeling that people were left misunderstood. However, tools that architects use to visualize the spaces have developed over time. Even more, the whole context of the visual communication has enriched from the rough sketch on a piece of the paper to physical models and digital visualizations. All these tools correspond to communication, a means how we can deliver uh, the message of the future space. Well, I think that architecture and construction industry is full with failed expectations just because of this weak communication in every stage, from client to architect, from architect to builder. It's just one huge frustration and chaos. For instance, uh, think about yourself in the role of a client. Your dream, your vision, your feel about the space you want to live in. What tools do you use? How can you express your, uh, your vision? And, and the opposite, an architect with, with his ambition, with his vision and idea about how, how your space should be. What tools does architect use to communicate it back to you? How can you um, talk to each other? And now, think about the first moment when you are truly sure about the space you're going to live in. It's reality. Because reality, guys, is the only way how we can understand the future. It's the only common language we can all understand. When you first enter that bare frame of the building that barely has a roof on the top, but you start to have that initial instinct of how wide or narrow the space will become. A fun fact here from reality of the practice. No. In order to explain the clients one or another solution, you know, we used to drag them to the objects that were already finished and showcased. And I remember myself calling, hey, Miss or Mister, this is like the architect here, you know, we're going to drop by and see how the size of your window frames affect the lightning in your bedroom, or that kind of a, quite an odd details. One thing, though, you had to keep a really good relationship with your clients. However, Professionals think that it's possible to uh, standardize, to systemize that individual feeling in data books and tables of uh, measurements. But would you agree? Do you think that uh, the, your feeling about the space is the same as the person next to you? Well, if we look a little bit on the construction process itself, there are different stakeholders involved, and where every each of them think in a different criteria. There is architect with his vision, a context. There is engineer who cares about the numbers and how to stick it all together. And there is client, and you just want to know how the space will look like and how I'm going to use it, right? Success in architecture is actually hidden 
in the process where one shall clearly communicate to other and vice versa. I had a chance to visit uh, previews of Venice Architecture Biennale and interview uh, architects from all over the world where I was curious and how often actually do clients request a change right after the building is finished? And they were nodding the head and confirming that in fact that more or less significant changes were done in the last stage of the construction or even after the project was finished. And you know what? It hurts more than failed expectations. It hurts a lot more when you have invested thousands, even millions, in the building. Well, you know what? Actually, the same feeling of lost in translation happens every day on the construction field. Expectations do not match reality. Many mistakes and errors happen in the construction field because of this weak communication, because, because of the com miscommunications between the 2D, 3D and the reality. There are so many hopes and expectations in all this process. Nevertheless, there is so much lost in translation. And now again, if we come back to the what kind of visualization tools do we have right now? At the end of the day, the drawings, the designs, the photoshops, it's just one huge illusion, a vision, a failed attempt to communicate the reality. The transparent and very close reality check is what attracted me to the virtual reality technologies. But not only, also ability to get as close as we can get to this pure empathic feeling about the space, cities and the world. Without any like barriers of uh, knowledge, language, perception, or location. Virtual reality is like a medium, but it's different from all we know so far. Synergy between human beings, architecture, and technology is what fascinates me. And all along through history, the progress has been driven by these creative minds and technological innovation. Paris Eiffel Tower, Sydney Opera, and fabulous buildings of Zaha Hadid. That's why in 2015, I built a team from young architects and tech professionals in order to experiment with that gray zone where architecture meets virtual reality. That was the real moment when to roll up your sleeves and start experimenting. We saw an opportunity in VR, in VR that could really become this common language, a common ground for all the stakeholders involved in the construction process. That was a tool to communicate in archite architecture, to engage and to be able to contribute to architecture. So it was um, almost like back in the days, just uh, now my toolbox consisted of a little bit more complicated uh, gadgets, wires, optics, and and a lot of unknown, but in the, in the same time, very intriguing. We did a little testing on the way. Um, we compared the 2D paper portfolio with a 3D model and the virtual experience. We are was an obvious winner in communicating this space, but another interesting aspect arose from that. People who had a chance of seeing the space in VR afterwards had a better ability to think in three-dimensional space. So basically, it is not just a presentation tool, but it can be also educative. It can increase the, the cap capacity of our uh, brain. A lot of tries, a lot of errors on the way, from tech advancement to human perception. And let me explain you just a couple of those major struggles that we have. The first thing, is visualization part. The hardware that actually does the whole trick in your brain and allows you to enter that virtual world. There's not just one device, as you see here, but it's actually several, and there are many more under the development. In any of the case, you are the one who's, uh, you know, wearing this head-mounted brick on your head and trying to understand how to get along with this technology. 
And this is quite a disadvantage for, uh, for VR to become a, a daily use of the medium. And um, the second thing is, okay, you have put the glasses on. So what's next? How do you navigate that? You're already familiar with the, with the buttons, with the clicks, uh, with the touch screens and swipes. But what if the whole space around you is your navigation panel? Nothing works like it worked before, because your whole body becomes the navigation system. In our projects, we use um, immersive gesture-based controls that uh, here you can use your hand as the remote controller. And with the gestures, you let the system to understand what you want to do. The third factor is obviously a human factor. Motion sickness in virtual reality is created by the disconnection between what you see visually in, in the device and how your body moves. And it may be a quite a bad experience for a lot of people in the first time. That's why we as the developers, we have to do everything. We have to find the ways how to provide the pleasant experience for everybody. The initial reason why we started to uh, play around the VR was to build something meaningful, something that would really benefit the industry of uh, architecture and construction. But you know, architects, they just want to do architecture. They don't want to learn another complicated software. So the tool had to be simple, intuitive. That would turn the 3D models into the virtual experiences without any extra complications and employing this power of VR technologies. I'm sure that virtual reality is the closest reality check that we can have as a human beings right now. It connects humans with architecture in that profound way that we have never seen before and provides us with a trial before the trial, ability to simulate the concepts before they even have been built. With this VR tool in hand, I no more have to call my clients and ask permission to enter their houses to show one or another solution. I can just simply click the icon on my desktop and, and enter the space and, and use it for my communication. So now if I have this technology that can bring us a little bit closer to reality, then maybe let's don't waste the materials, the resources, the human hours for building uh, false expectations. Let's experience architecture vividly. Let's bring that vivid sense of the space into life. The world is now standing on this edge where we are shifting from flat visualizations towards immersive environments. And gosh, I'm so excited about all those opportunities that we are can bring to us. And we are so looking forward where it's going to take us. Thank you.